We are going to visit a family Ganobiak in Orovske Vesele, where I learned the secrets and techniques of traditional rock weaving craft, which dates back to 11th century. Traditional loom, same that was used for making canvas, was used for rock weaving. People around here grew hemp and flax in the field, so first they used these plants to make canvas, later on they cut old clothes and bedclothes to narrow stripes, making rag rock fabric balls to weave rugs. This is also the case of a weaving nowadays. A weaver gets them around the shuttle and weaves the rug like this. This craft was the major source of income for families living in Orava region in the past and some families keep making rugs until today. Although they still sell them, it is not the major income in the family. Normally they are retired people or people who do it only in their free time besides their regular job. In northern Slovakia, weaving skills were a key part of everyday life. Recently, however, this complex craft knowledge has declined. In the family that we visited, surprisingly, men are the masters of this traditional way of rug weaving, which in our view is quite rare even in this part of Slovakia. Weavers usually also weave willow baskets or other decoration made of willow branches, traditionally at Easter or Christmas. There are many different patterns and techniques of rug weaving, traditionally hemp and flax thread preparation, spinning, and weaving were taught in the domestic environment, transmitted from the older generation by observation and hands-on learning. A traditional Slovak roof shingle is made from fir or spruce wood and it has around 50 centimeters. The best shingles are made in cold weather, that's why shingles are made from December to March. First, the tree trunks are cut into blocks. The blocks of wood are cut into quarters. The quarters are cut into planks and the middle is cut off. The tree bark is cut from the side and then a draw knife is used to whittle the shingle into a proper shape. The whittled shingle is put into a cutter which cuts a joint for the shingles to connect. The shingles are then sorted and packed into cylinders. After the packing, the shingles are soaked in waterproof substance for 48 hours. After 48 hours, they are pulled out, dried up and ready for shipment. For this video, we visited a family who runs their own business. They make cheese strings, which have become the most popular treat in the northern Slovakia, not only for the locals, but also for the visitors of Slovakia. Although they nowadays use machines and tools tailored for the business, they still keep the traditional way of how to make this traditional cheese product, moreover, without any chemicals. First, they bring milk to a boil and then they pour acid or lemon juice into it. It's left for 24 hours to curdle. You want only the curds, 
so liquid needs to be fully separated from milk. This takes between 10 and 20 minutes. Then, the solid cheese curdles are put into a huge mixer, in which the cheese chunks melt and make a nice smooth dough. The dough is left to cool down and later smaller chunks are soaked in hot water, spun into string cheese, either with hands or with a machine similar to a pasta maker. These strings are often braided. It was amazing to watch the woman braid and twist at a lightning speed. Some chunks of fresh cheese are made into small knots or even small buns. Korbački is best eaten fresh, but if you want to keep it a while and savor it slowly, then freeze it and cut off the chunks as needed. Por exemplo, o amarelo, por cima do vidrado, essa tinta já não pode ser uma pintura de arrasto. O pincel, não é? Já tem que ser por posição. Ou seja, vocês molham, o mal seca muito rapidamente, tem que... E ela vai ficar cheia de grumos. Quando ela... O que é que acontece? Vocês vão pôr aqui o verde, é sempre assim. Não é assim. Nós temos tendência a pintura... Não. A pintura deste tipo de... De azulejo tem que ser, de facto, a tinta já tem, as tintas já têm o vidrado, portanto, a pintura tem que ser, por preenchimento da zona, ela vai ficar automaticamente com grumos, mas não há problema. Quando ela depois vai ao forno, à mofa, para cozer, as tintas, de certa forma, vão fundir e vão se espalhar por toda esta parede, não é da linha, que vocês veem aqui, claro que isto, Basta a idade que tenho, não era perfeita esta técnica, nem eles queriam perfeição, não é? Não, nós não sabemos de quando, desde quando é que há o conceito de perfeição, seja no que for. Portanto, hoje falamos muito em que tudo o que se faz, tudo o que se produz tem que ser perfeito, mas não. E vejam, mesmo as réplicas, não convém que elas sejam perfeitas, nem as de estampilha, que são de processo manual, porque senão vamos ter o que a gente chama umas olhos de casa de banho, daqueles que foi quase que. Agora, não é? Se ver a, a postura certa, não. As que funcionam de análise começou na escola a aprender a fazer na escola. Reparem, uma coisa que eu reparo é que aquelas remilheiras que são, por exemplo, para trabalhar, têm sempre as costas que não sempre a ser de mais. De vez em quando aparece lá uma ou outra menina. Antigamente era mais visível, porque as mães ficavam em casa. Não havia tanto tempo de aulas, agora as crianças têm muito mais horas de, de aulas. É diferente.
Cyprus, as old as time itself. Its people proud of their ancient traditions, their folk art, their handicrafts, and their deep-seated cultural heritage. All go back to the very dawn of history. Down through the centuries, these ancient arts have been kept alive by these friendly island people, passed on from one generation to another. The island has been conquered and ruled by many. Their footprints remain indelibly etched on the landscape. The Cypriot people have nurtured all the special aesthetic elements from the past and incorporated them into their handicrafts. The Cyprus Handicraft Service of the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Tourism maintains a total commitment to revitalizing all aspects of traditional handicrafts of the island, blending them with the contemporary arts of today. The Cyprus Handicraft Service has set up training programs in the home and village centres, whilst in its workshops, housed in the handicraft centre itself, showroom samples are made under the supervision of specially trained and experienced staff. In the experimental weaving workshop at the handicraft centre, weavers make the Lefkonikon and Fiti weaving, famous for its multicoloured geometrical patterns and stripes, for the plumia as they're known. This ancient art of weaving can still be found in most of the villages and with the help of the Cyprus Handicraft Service it has become a thriving cottage industry. In the pottery and ceramics workshop experienced staff produce modern and traditional pots and ceramics with elements drawn from the country's long tradition. Engraved, relief, painted and polished decorations involve ancient techniques still employed today. Many items useful today are crafted by copying traditional designs or museum artifacts. The art of ceramics in Cyprus began in prehistoric times and the island is famous for its ancient pottery much sought after the world over. In the field of metalwork the Cyprus Handicraft Service has made a significant contribution. This is a very old art form which in Cyprus goes back to Homer's time. The art of silversmithing was known in ancient times. Notable examples of Cyprus silver have been found in the Mycenaean, Archaic, Classical, Hellenistic and Byzantine periods. cooperate with the service are working skillfully with copper producing handmade hammered vessels and objects based on traditional patterns and motifs. Cyprus is renowned for its great cultural heritage and folk art. They constitute the most spontaneous expressions of human presence on this island. In the past, Bulgarians used to be farmers. The lands which they cultivated were giving them fruit and feeding them. But in order to carry out their daily activities, they needed the tools and equipment which they couldn't make themselves. This way, various crafts were born to meet the needs and demands of the people. Most Bulgarian crafts had the purpose to facilitate the work on the fields or the household tasks of the women. But there were crafts which combined pragmatism with aesthetics and delivered beauty during the difficult day long. Nowadays, some ancient traditions in the Bulgarian crafts are preserved in several ethnographic complexes in the country. You can become well acquainted with them live in Edara, Zotograd and Old Dobrich. Multiple crafts are presented in the ethnographic complex Edar near the town of Gavrovo. The museum contains a total of 50 sites, houses with craft workshops, water installations and other buildings. 
the only collection in Bulgaria of technical installations driven by water. Filling mills, water mills, grindstones, etc. are situated there. 16 houses can be seen on the Crafts Bazaar in the Ether, which are exact copies of the buildings existing in the past in Gavrovo and the region. The visitors of Ether can watch in real time the work of the craftsmen. Pottery is one of the oldest crafts in the Bulgarian lands. Potters make various types of pottery, mostly for domestic use – cups, plates, vases, pitchers, pots, jars, etc. The potter's wheel is used to shape, sculpt and add extra decoration. It can be drawn, engraved or applicated. For the painted decoration is usually made by paint, as the painted patterns are usually those typical of the respective region. The application is made of clay, which is placed after the forming of the vessels. The potter's wheel is used for engraving as well. This way, various shapes are made – waves, spirals, etc. Wood carving is one of the crafts which added beauty and aesthetics to Bulgarian life. Wood carving is the process of working, cutting and shaping of the wood with an applied and decorative purpose by using various instruments the most popular of which are a knife, a chisel or a hammer. The outcome of the process might be a wooden sculpture, figure or a decoration of a wooden object. The final product of the process is also called wood carving. There were three types of wood carving – shepherd, home and church carvings. Shepherd carvings were the simplest type. Its products were mainly shepherd crooks, whistles, flutes and other items with simple shapes and decorations. Home carving was especially popular in the 19th century. Bulgarians decorated their homes by wood carving pieces. The more complicated the decoration was, the higher the status had the owner of the house. One of the most beautiful examples of this type of carvings are the two sons carved into the Skovo house in the town of Trevna. The church open wall carvings were the most complicated of the three types. Nowadays, quite beautiful wooden iconostases were kept in many Bulgarian churches. Parts of the distinctive charm of the Bulgarian culture are its beautiful carpets and rugs, which decorated the Bulgarian homes in the past. The typical bright and cheerful colors and patterns create a unique and impressive atmosphere and comfort. There are two techniques for ornamentation of decorative fabrics – smooth and tied. The oldest record of textile carpet ornaments in Bulgaria dates back to late 11th century. Bulgarian rugs are double-sided and are weaved on a vertical loom. There are two common ways to form shapes. The cotton technique is characterized by the formation of open works on the contour of figures and the Chiprovci technique has no open works.
Jeszcze raz, jeszcze raz, tak? Cały czas musi być nitka i igła na wierzchu. Nie spod spodu, tylko wszystko na wierzchu. I tak o. Tak. Raz z góry, raz z dołu. I znowu z góry. I z dołu. I w ten sposób powstaje wzór kurpioski, haft. Mhm. A to trudno w ogóle jest zrobić? Czy ktoś no pierwszy raz zaczyna pierwszy robić, raz to, to to powinien robić? To, no po prostu patrzeć, patrzeć i cały czas, żeby ta, nic, żeby ta igła była na wierzchu. Bo jeżeli już tam zostanie z drugiej strony, to wtedy już ciężko, już nie wiadomo gdzie wtedy, jak to zacząć. Mhm. A Czyli tak. najpierw nie, 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 nie robić już jakiegoś wzoru od razu Nic się nie serwety, tylko sobie próbować. Tak, najpierw. próbować na jakimś kawałeczku i najlepiej jest haftować po nicce, tak jak ja tutaj haftuję po nicce, wtedy jest równiutko, każdy uściek jest ułożony tak równo. I jakie trzeba wziąć płócienko czy na bawę? Najlepiej jest haftować na płótnie lnianym, są nitki grubsze i wtedy można się widzi jak te nitki lecą i po nich haftować. Mhm. Może na bawełnie, ale to już jest gorzej. Mhm. A dużo tam trzeba wziąć y, takiego, takiej odległości? Nie, to, 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 to znaczy, jeśli ktoś się uczy, to większe ściegi. Mhm. Ja nawet tutaj gdzieś miałam zaczęty, jak dzieci robiły, mhm. to można duże się, ja bym nabrała może nitki.